helicopters provided service in other less spectacular ways than medevac or search and rescue. Delivery of mail from home and fresh food supplies could be made to troops in advanced positions on inaccessible high ground, out of reach of the normal transportation system. Occasions like these, unprecedented in the history of warfare, were great morale boosters. The helicopter's first flirtation with tactical missions was reminiscent of World War I, with phosphorus bombs delivered by hand out the side door to the target below. But the idea of the helicopter as an offensive tool was to be developed by the Marines in this conflict, not so much as a vehicle for carrying weapons, as a vehicle for transporting troops over natural obstacles to engage the enemy where he least expected it. This tactic, known as vertical envelopment, had been experimented with before the war. In order to work effectively, it needed big helicopters in reasonably large numbers to transport an effective force in the shortest possible time. HRSs had been used to evacuate troops from difficult locations, but now it was time to use their large lifting capacity in an offensive role. This is an early vertical envelopment operation, an experiment under actual combat conditions. 230 Marines are being loaded into Sikorsky HRSs for transport to an inaccessible mountaintop behind North Korean lines. First to go is the shore party, whose objective is to establish the position and prepare it for the helicopters bringing in the bulk of the troops. Their flight in the helicopter takes them over terrain that would need days of back-breaking slog to penetrate on the ground. The idea is to disembark the helicopter as quickly as possible, but this is a first and knotted ropes are not that easy to come to terms with. Once on the ground, the shore party's job is to clear the area and secure it before the main body of Marines arrives in the HRSs. Now the ground has been cleared, the main body of helicopters can land to unload their complement of troops. The knotted rope is no longer a factor, but speed is still essential since each HRS must get out of the way to allow the next one to come in. Each HRS is carrying six fully equipped Marines. They move out of the helicopters to their assigned positions to establish a 360 degree perimeter defense. Some of the troops are assigned to patrols and others to forward positions to protect the main body. These machine gun sites are chosen for their ability to command avenues of enemy approach. Once they're set up, it becomes a waiting game. North Korean prisoners taken by the patrols are bewildered at the sudden appearance of American Marines behind the North Korean lines. They offer the Americans their safe conduct passes, psychological warfare surrender vouchers. The next stage of the operation is the transportation of supplies. They arrive on the same helicopters that brought the troops. Like the troops, 
they make the journey in hours rather than the days a land operation would have taken. The speed of the unloading process is assisted by a quick release arrangement on the slings, so the helicopter only has to pause for a moment before returning to base. Small offensive actions like this were the forerunner of full-scale vertical envelopment operations, launched from both land bases and offshore carriers. On October 11, 1951, the Marines launched Operation Bumblebee, the first battalion-strength helicopter lift of troops. Military history was in the making, history fashioned by the availability of the helicopter on the field of battle. In Operation Bumblebee, almost 1,000 Marines were loaded in successive waves into 12 HRSs. In 156 flights over a period of six hours, they were transported to a 3,000-foot mountaintop 15 miles away. The Marines were making use of Igor Sikorsky's concept of total freedom of transportation. With helicopters, they could surmount land and water and drop their cargo of troops on the least accessible of objectives.